All right, guys, some pretty exciting news. Uh, we've just had Valira's release and she she's out for almost two weeks, which means her price will drop from 15 to 10,000 gold. But for now, we have a new hero announcement. It's going to be Lucio from Overwatch. Lucio is a mobile support with dreadlocks and a lot of music he's playing. And uh, while I haven't played him in Overwatch yet, he is going to make his way to Heroes of the Storm now. So without further ado, I'd like to show the little intro trailer that Blizzard has released for him. Mm, what do we have here? Let's get this promo tour started. <laughs> oh yeah, Lucio in the house. Let's break it! Damn! I guess the pushback. Okay, cool. That looked uh, that looked pretty awesome. Uh, I wasn't familiar with this kit, so I actually went to look up what it is in Overwatch and what it is in Heroes of the Storm. Apparently, he can move fast past walls impassable terrain his movement speed goes up and it also allows him to go through terrain uh, let's take a look at his abilities which have already been released i'm here on go to gamers website uh heroes of the storm section i don't know how reliable this information is but it looks pretty good i had a very quick skim so let's take a look together at what lucio's kit is uh, his trait is going to be when moving alongside impassable terrain lucio can walk through other units and his movement speed is increased by 20%. Uh, and this effect stacks with other movement speed bonuses, which is pretty uh, pretty insane, actually. So he's gonna be... Okay, he's gonna be most like Karazim in the sense that he is a very mobile support. Quick paced, lots of escapes, and also penetrating the back line with his uh, trade. Seems really fun so far, I'm rather excited about him. Uh, his Q is going to be Soundwave. Deal damage to enemies in a cone-shaped area and knock them back. <laughs> cool. Uh, crossfade, play one of two tracks that passively provide allied heroes with either a speed boost or a healing boost in a large radius around you. Activate Crossfade to swap tracks. Okay, so you can press W to be either be on the one or on the other. The one is the healing boost. Restore a small amount of health every second to Lucio and nearby allied heroes. So it's a little bit like Brightwing, Except it sounds like it's ongoing, rather than in 4 second pulses like Brightwing. Plus, of course, you can change it. Speed boost instead. Increase the movement speed of Lucio and nearby allied heroes by 15%. And that's 5% more than Karazim's Soothing Breeze. His, um, his standard heal W also gives movement speed, 10%. Pretty good. 15 will be far more noticeable. As E is amp it up, race Lucio's crossfade track volume for 3 seconds, amping speed boost to 45% movement speed. That's a lot. Keep in mind that mount speed is only 130%. And so making 145% is going to make the entire team extremely mobile. And then significantly increasing the healing rate of healing boost alternatively. We don't know the exact numbers on that, but so far I absolutely love this kit. So cool. Uh, first heroic, sound barrier. After one second, Lucio and nearby allied heroes gain a massive shield that rapidly decays over the next six uh, seconds. Okay. That's a good support heroic. I don't think we really have it yet. It's like a storm shield, but it deteriorates rapidly. And then it's a heroic, comes quicker than storm shield. So it's going to require some skill to use it at the right time, just like a uh, Tassadar shield. It's not like a heal where you always get a fixed amount of heal, but you need to do it right before taking big damage. I like it. R Reverse Amp is his W, his crossfade track, will now be blasting at enemy heroes. What I don't know if it will blast at enemy heroes simultaneously while still giving uh, bonus boosts to allies. This I'm not sure yet. But anyway, you'll blast it at enemy heroes for 4 seconds, you cause healing boost to inflict damage every second. From the way they say it, I think both will be active at the same time. But again, I'm not sure. And speed boost will slow their movement speed by 45%. You know, 
great design so far, I think. I like everything about it so far, and I don't always say that. Uh, passive, increase amped up's duration to 4 seconds. Okay. And here's his talents. Uh, firstly, his level 1 talents. Increase the movement speed of speed boost to 20 from 15. Or you do a quest where you need to get takedowns and it'll create a 60% speed boost when you use amp, which is your E. Keep in mind it goes from 15 to 45 normally. Now it goes from 15 to 60. Pretty insane. 60%? Can you imagine the whole team on that? Uh, Accelerando. Increase the movement speed bonus of wall ride. Instead of 20, it's 40 over 4 seconds. And you maintain that speed so long as you maintain the wall riding movement speed bonus. Now, I don't know how close you need to be to a wall, but I'm assuming absolute collision. Touching or very, very nearly. That's cool. 40%. Or you can increase the movement speed of wall ride to 70% for 1 second when near or passing through an enemy hero. Even more juking. Okay, interesting level 1 kit. Level 4. Increase the knockback of Soundwave, which is his um, cone-shaped knockback, by up to 50%, depending on how close they are to you. So the closer they are, the further you knock them back, I suppose. Very su useful support kit. Uh, off the wall. If you hit an enemy hero while you have the wall riding movement speed bonus, reduce the cooldown by 3 seconds. Okay. Okay. Uh, chase the base quest after hitting 20 enemy heroes with sound wave increase the arc by 50% and the range by 20 okay nice this is gonna make you safe knocking them back further and peeling for your allies this one uh, this level one peeling for your allies more wall riding, so more juking and jiving. So you can go in and out easily. After hitting enemy heroes with sound wave. Oh, yeah, this is more knockbacks, this is further knockback. That's what it is. After hitting, increase the arc and range. They're all, anyway, they're all the, the same. You need to see which one is best and probably you'll only ever pick one once you figure out which one is best. Maybe a second one occasionally. For level one, the one I like the most this one mass movement speed but you need take down so this is going to be situational and i think that's good this is going to be the easiest to use this is going to be the most aggressive to use and it's going to be the most sick escapes so i think level one design is very flexible with which one you might want whereas level four is a bit more let's figure out which one is best and always use that one Level 7. Uh, you can place a permanent killable ward on the ground that gives nearby allies your crossfade and amp it up auras, which do not stack with your own personal ones. So basically, a totem that gives Lucio's auras. It doesn't say how much HP it has, which is kind of relevant. Is it like Scouting Drone and Heal Ward, which is like one hit? Or is it more like Earth Ally from Karazim, which is a few hits? That's pretty cool. Uh, e, loudspeaker. If your aura is currently affecting two or more allies when you cast Amp It Up, increase its radius by 50% for the duration. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Block party. Support allies with your aura for a total of 8 minutes. Multiple allies support rewards more time and then it, its radius would increase. Isn't this two ETC talent names? Probably it's the wrong talent name, but the, the utility seems to be quite believable. Difficult to judge which one is the best here. Radius increase is pretty damn sick. But you do need 8 minutes uh, support, which will last at least until level 14, I think. I'm not sure if you would want this. Maybe it takes a little bit too long, but it depends. You could do it in 2 minutes if you're literally 5-man deathballing around an objective. For two minutes. And I don't know if it can, it says support allies. So it doesn't count on yourself. Alright. The heroics we kind of saw them. And then. Level 13. Gain a permanent shield. After switching tracks. A permanent X point shield. Okay so that doesn't mean it is permanent. 
the damage taken will remove it. It just means it doesn't expire. One and a half seconds after switching tracks. Switching tracks also immediately clears any current shield from this talent. Okay. So the more you switch, the more survivable you get, which will stimulate you to do both speed and healing alternatingly. Because you could be tempted to just leave it on one if you're uh, like an easygoing player. So you get shields from that. Can't stop, won't stop. You cannot be slowed or rooted while wall riding movement speed bonus is on. Oh my god. You can still get silenced and stunned. But not slowed or rooted. So you're wall riding and you're trying to get away and they, they feral spirit or entangle you or thunderclap you and you just keep going at full speed. That's above full speed. That's sick. Very uh, situational though because you need to make sure that you're at the right terrain. If the map is very open, then you know you won't spec into that. So that's good. This is a design-wise, a situational one, which is very good always for design. Hard style: gain 25 armor while you have wall riding movement speed boost, reducing damage. It's good, but I don't think I would go for that one. I prefer to travel unfettered than to have armor only situationally while next to the wall. So far, I like this one, and I like uh, this one, the first two. The third one, the least, and for the fourth one, heal yourself for X amount of HP after exiting from an enemy stun, silence, or stasis. This effect cannot happen more than once every 10 seconds. After exiting from an enemy stun, silence, or stasis. Now, I'm assuming that it counts when your stun period ends. If you get stunned four times in a row, do you exit it in between from an enemy stun? I'm assuming it has to be the entire stun chain has to be over. So I'm not quite sure how this one works yet. It does not protect you from a stun chain, but neither does this or this. And I guess nothing really protects you from a stun chain, but this can pre-protect you. So this seems to be my favorite, but there could be some situational good goodness. Uh, let's go to level 16. Heliotropics. Soundwave also blinds enemies for two and a half seconds. So that's the knockback, yeah? Two and a half seconds. You just knock them back. If they are melee, it will take some time for them to get back. So maybe you have another two seconds grace period. Not bad. Not bad. Always nice to have some blinds. Oreo has it. Lily has it. Karazim has Earth Ally. Now we might have another support that can deal with auto attackers. Which is really useful. So far, I really like what I see. I think he will enter and he'll be viable right away. Depending on his numbers, he could be strong or, or weak. But design-wise, I think he'll be viable. He's got everything he needs. Notably, what I have not yet seen is cleanse. Anyway, let's go forward. Rejuvenacienza. Sensia. Okay. While Amp it Up is active, Crossfade's healing boost heals for an additional 3% of the target's maximum health per second. Uh, amp it up is active, healing boost heals. Wow, we get percentage based heal outside of a healing totem. So far, it's only been healing totem heal that does percentage based healing. None of the standard uh, heals of any of the supports does it. That's interesting. That could make tanks so survivable, man. But it's only during amp it up anyway. We don't know the cooldown for Amp It Up yet. Mm, but I'm assuming it's going to be something like 10 to 16 seconds. We'll see. Uh, we bring it together. If your aura is currently affecting two or more allies when you cast Amp It Up, Crossfade's healing boost is increased by 40% for the duration. Okay. I hope there will be a clear indicator for the healing aura range. I, I'm assuming it will be. Visually, he looked very uh, spiffy already in the beginning of the video. Okay, cool. Uh, up the frequency. Amp it up's mana cost is reduced from 80 to 100. Oh, and this is from uh, 280 from 100. So now we also know the mana cost. 100 mana for his E? My word. Just from that, I'm assuming the cooldown is actually more like 14 to 20 seconds. 
it's very rare to have 100 mana cooldowns on uh, short uh, 100 mana spells on short cooldowns look at holy light from uther it's 12 seconds 90 mana so 100 mana should be 14 to 18 seconds okay anyway reduce the mana cost and dealing basic attack damage to enemy heroes also reduces the cooldown of amp it up by a third of a second hmm Dealing basic attack damage. Now we don't know his auto attack speed. And is it like every single time you do basic attack damage you get the CDR? I'm assuming yes. I don't know his attack speed though. Because I don't know the Overwatch character. It could be good. Could be good. Seems nice. Bossa Nova. Heroic number one. The one where uh, you get the shield burst. Reduce the cooldown of sound barrier. The shield now decays over four seconds. Ooh. Doesn't mean it decays faster. The but implies a yes. The first heroic with a drawback, unless you count Ariat Crater's self immobility or Chen's wandering keg unwieldy controls. For the rest, I don't think there's any drawbacks on any of the heroics in the game. And this one does. So I can pretty safely say it'll never get used. What's the base cooldown? Doesn't say. You know, if it's suddenly usable every 10 seconds, yeah, it will get used. But if it goes from like 90 to 60, I don't think it will get used. We'll see. Uh, the second heroic, non-stop remix. The duration of reverse amp is paused while it affects affects, not effects, anyway. Uh, while it affects two or more enemy heroes. Wow! The duration is paused. That's a good thing, right? So as long as you can keep two enemies inside your radius you'll keep slowing them or keep damaging them that could be nice let's look at the other two the non-heroic upgrades using crossfade encore using crossfade while amp it up is active resets the duration of amp it up back to its max duration crossfade so switching your aura while you have the super boost Resets the duration of the super boost back to the max duration. Okay, so let's say if super boost lasts four seconds, at three seconds in, you switch aura and it lasts for another four seconds. So you have a total duration of seven seconds, three of which was the healing and four of which was the, uh, the speed boost or vice versa. Powerful and fun. Lots of switching, very dynamic character. Synesthesia. Auditiva might be a reference to something, I don't know it. Uh, casting Amp It Up removes all stun. Removes all stun, slow, and root effects from nearby allies. Oh, there we go. There's his cleanse. Level 20 cleanse, a la Lunara. Casting Amp It Up removes all stun and slow and root effects from all nearby allies and all slow and root effects on Lucio. Whoa. That's strong. Let's keep moving, boys. And girls. Do you like Lucio's talents? Looks strong. I don't see the synergy. Looks strong. And thanks for the article, Nick Dorazi and Dorazio. I love games and love writing about them. <laughs> yeah, looks strong. Cool. Okay. Well, that's Lucio for you, ladies and gents. Um, judging by release schedule, which has been three to four weeks for the better part of two years now, um, with, Lu with Valera being about almost two weeks in we should expect lucio's patch version like the test version or the release in a week or two right now it's the 4th of february which means probably around the 12th february or 19th february we should have some version of playable lucio either test version or the actual release i'm looking forward to it hope you do too and i hope you enjoyed this video have a great night guys and girls bye i want to group up this time I can try to get Chromie. She's probably going to rotate through middle. No, she's playing it safe. Then I'll just help here. Good idea. Take 